we are live. Welcome everyone to the Coaching to Flourish podcast. I am your host, Raj Anderson, Executive Life Coach and Coach Assessor. I'm excited to be back. Been out for a couple of weeks and I'm excited to be here with John Andrew Williams, who is the founder of Coach Training EDU and a special guest, Shawnee. Welcome, Shawnee. Would you introduce yourself for us to the listeners? Absolutely. It's lovely to meet you all. Uh, my name is Shani Platero. I am a recent graduate of Coach Training EDU's 1.0 uh, Essentials program, and I am currently enrolled in the 2.0 program as well. I have been working on getting my practice up and running, and outside of this, I'm a project manager by trade, so have been in that, worked for Pinterest, Savvy Cooperative, currently a, a project manager and operations manager for a company called Apex. Um, and they are fantastic, but happy to be here. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you, Sean, and congratulations on completing your 1.0 and going into 2.0. And I'm going to hand over to John. John, what would you add before we get into our demo? I'm just really excited to have you back, Raj. I feel like I did my very best to hold it down for two weeks. Uh, and then it's fun to see you here, Shawnee. And I know uh, we've had a couple of sweet sessions together, and it's really, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Um, a lot so yay and it's queued up so let, let's do that and then there we are boom, boom. all right ready to go i'm ready i mean so so this is just part one we, we realized it takes us at least two coaching and flourishes to get through one demo so i this is just part one here we i'm just gonna let it play uh okay. what would you like to look at yeah so i think she for this one, the two things that are top of mind for me this week, and we can go in either direction, they're two very different ones, uh, are either uh, kind of fully embracing a little bit more of self-identity like we talked about last time, except for more like less acknowledging that it's there and more just like actually running with it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one is kind of more business side of things. Um, like I'd like to start getting everything set up there. And so those are the two things that are occupying most of my thoughts this week. How are they related? Well, <laughs> I think that there is an element of I, I love hesitancy in both, uh, where it's just like- I just love this profession so much. Like, I just got to, you know what I mean? It just feels like question asking is such a beautiful thing to be good at. Truly. And that question has popped into my mind and then you asked it, John. Um, Shawnee, wh what do you think? Because you now you are listening in from a different perspective, and we're only 40 seconds in, but John asked that connection question there. Yeah, it was uh, like a really, really uh, impactful question for me in the moment, just because I remember uh, approaching it very definitively in my head as two different topics, and then immediately it was just like okay but how are they related and i was like oh these are the same thing which you're gonna see in a second um, and so it was um it was a very very powerful question to just kind of be hit with right out of the gates 46 seconds in <laughs> but yeah what i love about these coaching of first is too is i can sit back and i don't even have to use my energy to think about what question is going to happen next like you know what i mean consciously when oh like i just trust like this other person is going to ask the next question. And uh, I think the, it reminds me of like the system one and two, like the, the effortful thinking and then the, you know, system one thinking, which is like our brains, like literally like our neurobiology, when we're asked a question, it, and like our, our minds are designed to immediately try to find an answer, you know, like, well, like, you know, that system one, but then system two is that more effortful thinking about it. Uh, I mean, I, I've been, Thinking about these system one, system two, both in asking questions and how clients answer. Uh, and I think it'd be a really interesting lens to look at this one through um, mm -hmm. if I'm looking at any lens. Uh, but that's what I've been thinking about recently. This one is fascinating to me because the question seems to come really quickly. Uh, but I think it's still, it, it can invite that deeper thinking too. I agree. Ready? Let's let it roll. Let's let it roll. I want to be more certain before going forward with it. Um, and so it's just kind of like there is a part of it that's just like you just need to take the jump. But also I'm just like, but where am I jumping to? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. So where are you jumping to? I think, hmm. I think there's like a lot of things that are in the air right now. And I think the jump is catching them a little bit. Yeah. Like getting them solidified and in place and ready to go. Like there's a lot of good things that are like either happening or coming and like also a lot of challenging things that are happening or coming and I'm excited for all of them but I also am just like trying to integrate all of that into just I guess my perception of my life and just worldview where do you tangibly want to be a couple of years from now yeah uh, Colorado, I'd like to actually have some friends that are in person. Um, <laughs> all of my friends are online, which I love them anyway, but still, um, I'd like to have uh, a few more contract gigs up and running. Um, ideally like on my way to moving to London at some point in there. Okay. Um, but, but I mean like business wise, like, you know what I mean? Like the other. Career. On the business side of things, I'd like to just have like a steady stream. Like I don't want it to be, yeah. I think I, I want it to be kind of like a balance between the project management and the coaching uh, because like I love both and they do different things. Um, and so I kind of like staying, I'd like to keep both of them in my life in some regard. Gotcha. So where are the leaping to? What's the, what? What would be the measurement of success of this conversation? I think the measurement of success would be I think knowing at least a little where I'm landing. Okay. And let's say we got there, what would that change? I think it would allow me to take the or to jump a little bit more not easily, but jump with less anxiety about it. <laughs> okay. Link. Yeah. So you're after more clarity on like the landing spot. Mm-hmm. How will you know you've landed successfully? I think because... What do you think, Raj? So, John, there's a couple of things I'm curious about. I was only four minutes in and so much has happened, hasn't it? Um, there is this piece here which could seem like you're asking information questions versus exploration questions. Yet knowing you, I know that you ask your questions with a purpose. So I wanted to clarify that. Right, because I'm, I'm thinking about coaches, newer coaches listening mm -hmm. in saying, well, what's the difference here, John, between information gathering and exploration? Or what, what is the purpose of that for you in that moment? Like which question are you thinking of? Um, when you're kind of asking about um, where Shawnee wants to go, right? And, and she starts in talking about moving to london or any or yeah, yeah yeah i was like i i wanted it to be tangible i it felt to me like uh landing landing where like there's no i'm not feeling the tangibility of the idea yet i'm not finding i'm not finding myself in let's call it tangible thought geography uh and i also feel like i'm i'm still doing too much of the work of the session and I'm waiting for Shawnee to like to say, all right, like this is what I want. This is what I'm going for. This is it. This is the this is I'm not feel I'm I'm still feeling like uh there's a there's an energetic tentativeness. You're still pulling teeth with me. I can tell looking at this recording is just like uh the questions and kind of pushing me along further in that regard. I remember it even like obviously from a different perspective back then was just kind of like really like you were asking me to put this into kind of words and like give it that tangibility and i was just like i am not seeing that tangibility <laughs> um, and so i was like trying to make that real for myself and 
also to put that into words at the same time. Um, and I remember it being like feeling like it's just kind of like seeing something out of the corner of your eye and just trying to get there and see it fully. Yeah, it checks out. That's I, it's, I'm not like, uh, I think from a coaching standpoint, it's not like coaching annoyed, but it's coaching like, dude, what, like, like, what are we like, when is this going to start getting traction? Like energetic, I'm looking for energetic traction. Um, I, that's where it's coming from. And then when she answers, I, I was meaning where are you jumping to metaphorically when she answers very much in real terms, I just, a part of me just wants to bat that out of the way. I'm like, yeah, yeah, we get that. Like, it doesn't, <laughs> you know, it's more like, no, what, like we have time together. Like what's, what's, what is the thing that you want to walk away with that's going to fundamentally change your life and change the way that you're viewing these things? Um, that's where I'm after. And, but I also at the same time, I have this feeling of, okay, Shawnee like has her life together. Like this feels like it feels like someone who can apply project management skills to the project of developing a business. This feels like a very easy, like one, two, three type thing. You know what I mean? So like part of me is like, so what are we really doing here? Um, but at the same time, I want to get like, I want to respect the idea that you're also exploring and putting these things together in real time. That's, that's where I'm coming from with this. Curious, Raj, your thoughts on this in this space from an assessor thank standpoint. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, John. So so to clarify, people listening, these questions were purposeful. They were intentional. You are helping your client to dig deeper. You're leaning into intuition. You're building traction here. I guess the other thing I was curious about, um, about because there's a snowman in the background. So I was like, oh, this session was done um or sorry ghost right so halloween time um is that right no decoration, actually <laughs> uh see he's still behind me he's just out of sight right now ah. um, so he's there okay so that was an assumption i made so i was like oh when was this session done was this yeah you know, what was the time frame for when you did this coaching session john between other sessions that you've done so i was just curious about that um, but anyway, you have just corrected my assumption, Shawnee. So uh, holding the mirror up to myself, not to assume if I see snowman in the background that that was, uh, sorry, a ghost, it would be Halloween. Um, but John, what I did like was there were lots of questions in there, but I like the way you split the measure question into two as well, you know, in, in terms of the change. So you're making it tangible, but there is also that learning and being part in that measure question. Right. What led you there? I am after, uh, I think what I'm after as a coach is uh, a feeling of, of congruence, a feeling of where a client's perspective matches with the session goal, matches with their being, matches with um, like an internal image. I also have. I, I just I can't. I've, I've I've thought about this deeply, like a couple of different ways. Like this idea of congruence and congruence. I feel like this is what makes this is what makes coaching sessions work and can feel like you're really like literally like on the same page as, you know, an athlete on the field. Like when a coach and an athlete are together on the field, there's a certain energetic feel to it. And I, and what I'm feeling here with Shawnee is I think we're getting there. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm getting understanding and it's coming mostly from my belief that Shawnee has this completely. I think what we're doing here from a coaching standpoint where I'm at is we're just putting words to things that she has not yet said out loud to anybody in this way and that's obvious but it's like okay this is that and, and that's a big deal like that that's kind of where i'm at as a coach at this point curious shawnee how that like does that how much does that land you know like or because am i off because this is i mean i'm making assumptions too just on listening and more things for 
That's okay. Uh, I definitely think, especially looking, like watching the recording and kind of having both perspectives in this moment, um, congruence is definitely an idea that I think has a lot of weight here. Because the thing is, is that like, I do, I am a project manager. I do have the skills to do this. And it is something that I can apply and like kind of cross-functionally apply those, those skills rather easily. And I would to anybody else. And so it's at that point, you are aware that the thing that I'm struggling with in my head is not like, you know, what do I need to do? What's the pathway? What's the ABC? It is entirely just like, how do I get this to align with my own internal congruence? Yeah. And what am I like trying to process? And like, there is a lot of vulnerability in terms of like, I hadn't said some of the stuff that we covered in the session or in the session that we did in class uh, out loud. And so definitely getting those pieces to align internally and externally. Yeah. Yeah. That checks out. That feels exactly where. I'd say we're out with this too. It's amazing how much you can hear in less than like just five minutes. You know, we're we four and a half minutes into it. Uh, and I do remember this session does get cooking pretty quick here. So uh, here we go. I will know what the path from there looks like. Like I know my action items. I know my next steps. I know... Like, not just my goals, but kind of, like, what are the things that I need to overcome to get there? There's a clearer vision. Right. So let's play. Let's go there. I mean, if you were to imagine, um, like, you know, ideal scenario, like, ideal landing spot, let's say six months from now, what's that? I think six from, from months from now, I have the coaching set up and it's starting to roll along um, and like gain traction. Um, I think I have my contracts a little bit more sorted project management wise. Um, and I think for me personally, like it's easier to be it's easier to take up space without being nervous about taking up space yeah let's go there what is it about mm -hmm. taking up space that's uncomfortable now we got there i think there's like a big question of kind of belonging and also it's just like i i very much approach other people as if like they are like yeah there is space in the world for you and it is yours to have and yours to take um i've only recently begun applying that to myself and so okay. it's still a little bit of a work in progress there yeah like what what work has already been happening and what work is left to go well for the work that hasn't happening is i'm starting to get more familiar with my with myself as in like not just like the flaws and, and the areas improving or whatnot but like the strengths yeah um and so that's one thing that i've been working on um i've been trying to get more comfortable like verbally and in my head acknowledging those things um and kind of owning up to them in their own way um and I think also it's been, put it this way, uh, <laughs> I know there's like a bit in a John Mulaney thing where he was like, you could pour soup into my lap and I'd probably apologize to you. Like that's been me for my life. I'm trying not to apologize to like every time I run into a chair or a door or somebody does something. <laughs> like it's not always my fault. Right. And now I'm thinking as a coach, like, yeah, we're here. Like we've arrived. Everyone. <laughs> Absolutely. Think, We're yeah. in it. And yeah. I, I do know that we only have a few minutes left and we just got into this. So you will have to tune in for part two. I do want to acknowledge you, Shawnee, for both 
being on now and listening to this with us and the vulnerability that you're displaying in the session. So I, I'm just I'm really honored to be in this space listening with you and I can't wait to listen to part two. Uh, John, some really great questions there, kind of getting into it. I also do want to call out, because I get these questions, coaches listening. So it might have seemed like John was asking a double question, yet what I was seeing John do was use it as a tool, like what work has been done and what work has left. So it was like a split question. He's almost using it as a tool. Um, am I reading that correctly, John? With the way yeah, you're asking, I know a few double questions. I I don't know. How, I have mixed feelings on Raj. I feel like you might be, be. I feel like you might be being too generous towards me on the double question thing. But maybe I don't know. I feel like I do it, but I do it purposefully more now. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it worked. So maybe you're on. You're right on. Let's uh, ask Shawnee. What do you do think? <laughs> I think if it hadn't been a double question, I probably would have automatically started going into both of them anyway. Um, like they do kind of, the topics do kind of flow into each other and are intrinsically linked in a way that I think allowed for the double question. Um, so yeah, it worked. <laughs> I feel like that's my most, uh, it's one of my biggest coaching vulnerabilities. When I listen to myself, I hear so many double questions and I think, Oh, I've worked on it. Like that is one thing I've consciously worked on. Um, yeah. You pinpointed a vulnerability, Raj. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening there, John? What's taking place in this moment? I mean, I, that's that's there. And I'm just really grateful for Shawnee's vulnerability here as well. Because it allowed the session to click. It allow like you're allowing yourself to go to a place that feels like, ah, now we're here. Now this makes sense. This is deep life work. We are now moving internal mountains that will have an impact on the rest of your being in life. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 where I'm at as a coach, and I'm feeling very very pleased with life at this point. I can just feel it. Like, look at my face, like on this thing. It's like, yeah, that's very. I know it's mid frame, but it's a very happy coachy face. <laughs> I remember, like, something that has held true for both both of the practice sessions we've done have been has been like a lot of internal work going and both times you've said something about like you can see me mid-session just like moving internal mountain yeah uh, and uh like i remember this one especially like because the first one it was harder to say this one i think there was more movement uh that was allowed to happen and it was yeah it was pretty cool to see you know it's cool to see somebody like take a session so so you know yeah here's a very tangible thing like do like how do i balance you know, adding in, you know, career and then doing coaching on the side. Like it's a very clear like thing, but then it's the internal, like who am I in these places? Like that's a really, that's an amazing thing to look at with another person. So yeah, it was a gift. Let's see it happen. I was just pausing to reflect. And I'm sure the listeners will be reflecting on that. So we have these themes of kind of moving and shifting internal mountains. We are on this exploration around taking up space and identity. And we've touched a lot on vulnerability. And John was even sharing some of his own vulnerabilities. And we all have them as coaches and things that we continue to hold up the mirror to. I'm going to put a pause here because we're going to listen to part two next week. Okay, here we go. So we have about... 20 minutes, right. you know, about 18 minutes left. Let's see what I go up with. So it seems, I mean, even if you're able to, to process this and say this all out loud, uh, I mean, it seems like in some ways you're already there. What's holding you back from completely embracing your growth? I like these kind of questions. Uh, this question, I think, comes from, I did a leadership program once with 
uh, Laura Whitworth, you know, one of the founders of the ICF, and one of her big things was jet lag, where people who are involved in self-growth or training programs or leadership programs tend to grow uh, in different areas without being aware of growth, which happens. And then all of a sudden you're like, you know, different perspectives have moved beyond the present circumstances. And so I think a lot of times when people feel like they're in, in it, uh, they're they're beyond it. It's like okay, so why why are we stuck here? Like what what's really truly going on? So that's, this is where this question is coming from, because uh, it feels like no, shine like you already have like all the self confidence. Are you kidding? Like you show up brilliantly. Like what's what's really holding you back now? You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's where this is. That's the background, I guess, to this kind of question. All right, let's see what happens. I think it's just like. The easy answer is that it's a little bit scary. Um, I think the harder answer is I don't quite know what I look like um, without some of that. Yeah. Um, okay. So like what happens if you just stay like what happens if you just stay right here like don't change at all just keep status quo what happens stay a stress ball for the rest of my life and probably have a lot of regrets every single point like i don't want to stay here is the thing like i do want to go for it and like like i do want to take the jump i just like and I think I've started taking it in some ways, but like it's also just kind of like for the personal stuff, I don't think I know quite who is landing, if that makes sense. For the part you don't know who is landing? Was that? Yeah. Like I'm landing as me, yeah, but like also there's elements of myself that like I don't know quite as much like who exactly is a Shawnee that like is just like yeah I am I have good things and I am actually an intelligent and creative and clever person who can go through and do all this stuff like I don't quite know <laughs> how like I think it's learning how to live with that Okay. That is a little bit confusing. Gotcha. What's the what what's your hypothesis? Let's go there. Like what's the like let's say we put an action let's say we put an action step on the you know big a big scary action step, right? What's your mm -hmm. hypothesis on how you will handle it? And what are you most curious about? I think my hypothesis is is that if like hmm, my hypothesis is that I can do this right like I've done challenging things before I know how to push myself like to accomplish those challenging things like it's not an impossibility um and in some cases, it's even like a kind of a joy getting to like, you know, learn new things, be a new person, like yeah. find new identities. But like, I think. Yeah, I think that's my hypothesis that I can do it. What was the second part of the question? What's the action step that can test something about this hypothesis? Got you. I think. Hmm. I think the action step is mainly putting it into like solidly just into practice uh like not just like my personal stuff but also like for the coaching stuff I know there's like things that I can do and like I mean one of the things that I'm kind of running into is that for ideal client interviews I'm still trying to figure out who I'm supposed to be interviewing <laughs> and so maybe I just like test out like you know, three different areas and see which one resonates the most or something like that. Like, I think it's actually, you know, starting to check off boxes on this to-do list. Right. Yeah, do do that. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Yes, 
like finally yes and this is i mean this feels like a, a mixture of that learn be do right where it's it's a doing question but it's it's a doing question that's tinged heavily with being like okay like this is your this is your being self this is your brilliant self how does your brilliant self show up doing something and let's do something tangible rather than just theoretical like i think i'm there like no 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 what's like what are the action steps and how do you want to be in those action steps um I didn't, I wasn't too thrilled though. I, I like this part. I wasn't too thrilled with the first part where you say, oh, these are the things I'm leading into. And then I just, I just keep going. I don't stop and like sit with that a little bit. I would have liked to have sat with what you just said earlier. Uh, I feel like that was a missed opportunity. I think we all have missed opportunities here and there, but um, I do like where you went with it as well. Uh, I think that there was like, I remember in the moment of just like, oh, you just have to do it, of there being like kind of a feeling of like release almost um, in terms of like, it felt like giving myself permission a little bit. Like permission to be like, okay, we've covered this. Let's just keep moving. Like that's like. Uh, more permission in the like, I think, because a lot of what I had been kind of encountering in, over the course of this was like, um, there is a difference between like self-perception in terms of, and then actual, uh, like actualization. And so it was kind of like giving in that moment of just like, okay, just like, you know, run with it, embrace it, move forward with it. It was kind of like, okay, you can just say like, this is who I am now and I'm learning who I am and I can go and do things while still learning um, mm -hmm. in a way totally wow i mean what's cool about it is as a coach i did okay it wasn't great it wasn't terrible it just was okay but as a client i felt like you handled it as a client and you as a client brought the value to this part really well you know uh which is nice it's like all right like that that's this is one of the reasons why i love this coaching process so well is as a coach you can release the like so much pressure that needs to be done like in a certain way or that you need to get every opportunity or like every opportunity need every opportunity needs to be seized no not really no i agree it's like uh i don't know that's part of why i really love the three trusts so much uh mm -hmm. is that in a way it kind of gives yourself a little bit of permission and grace at the same time um like because it's not solely just one process or one coach or one client it's all three totally yeah and as a coach you don't know what's happening below the surface like i don't you don't really know I mean, you have ideas you have windows but you don't have the complete awareness that someone you know that your client has and trusting that i mean it's almost like it's nearly, it is impossible. It's impossible to know. So if it's impossible to know, why would we spend time and energy on trying to know? The best thing you can do is simply stay curious and then give it, give that curiosity to your client. Uh, this feels very clear. All right, ready to keep rolling? Let's let it roll. John, can I just add? Yeah. Tomorrow. Something. Yeah, please. I was really intrigued by when you asked, like, what happens if you stay here? So even if there isn't that knowing, your intuition is telling you that there is something more. Or, you know, even in part one, we were looking at any resistance or where you were stepping into some challenge or direct communication. And what I was curious about observing Shawnee when you asked that question, she was responding, was the left side of her body it looked like her leg was tapping. Right. So there was energy there. And I was like, what is that? What What's happening here? Even with that question and as she is releasing what she is saying. Shawnee, I just noticed your body language there. What were you thinking when I said that? Uh, there absolutely is. I, I'm a nervous fixture uh, is the thing. So there's usually movement happening, uh, not just nerves, but like there's just a lot of fidgeting in general. But I remember in that specific moment, it was like, you know, at being asked the question and then in that moment you have to kind of live in the question and just kind of like what does that feel like and it was just like immediately like oh so much anxiety <laughs> so 
Thank you for sharing. I was just curious about it. I was like, what is happening there in that moment? See, that's that's the MCC path. Like this coaching missed the MCC. <laughs> I would not send this into the ICF or MCC. Uh, but that comment, yeah, that's that's an MCC one right there. All right, let's let it roll. Well, let's see what happens. <laughs> Amazing. And that's such a when will you let me know if you've done them or not? Did we do I'm them? I'm finding some people today to reach out cool. to. So and get, right. and start getting that scheduled so you got my email right you'll let me know like yes i did it okay okay i have a question yeah it might be a prickly one. Oh dear but it's here i rarely do this too. to what degree is uh grappling with your identity, who you are, a form of procrastination. It's a bigger form of procrastination than. Shawnee, what were you thinking? What was that? What? How did that question land? Um. Okay. So I think like I handle a lot of questions that get thrown my way with like an element of practicality, just kind of like, oh, this is in my yard now. Now I have to think about it and do something about it. Uh. So like immediately you asked that and I was like yeah that tracks that that absolutely makes total sense to me I think in more of the commentary side of things uh you asked that question and there was a part of my brain that was just like ah, rude okay yes <laughs> rude <laughs> yes that was a great example of prickly question though. We, we have to even take that out of here in this demo. We use it in this demo, but we get ex asked for examples on prickly questions all the time. And there was that great example. You did preface it with, this might be a prickly question. So what was your gut telling you when you prefaced it with that, John? I rarely preface things. I rarely yeah, do. You don't. Uh, but I feel like I, ha I knew it was rude. I knew it was a rude question. It was a question that was not kind of nice. Like it was not a nice question, uh, but I just felt it because I was like, in my in in my being, I felt in my being. I'm thinking, okay, here's a person who has so much to give, so much like so much there. Uh, literally, your day job is project managing. Like that is your literal day job. So I'm thinking to myself, all right, so here's someone who has so much to give is a solid coach, a project manager, like, and then is, is saying, okay, I don't know who I am, so I can't go out in the world yet, or I'm not comfortable, you know, it's like, like, that's what's happening internally for me. And so that's where that question is coming from. It's like, it's no, Shawnee, you have it all. You're brilliant. Go like the world needs you go. This is like, why, you know, what, why, why this, you know, so that, that's where this question was coming from. Uh, I'll be completely transparent. Thoughts on that other than rude? <laughs> did it work? Did it shake it up? Like it did work. Um, I like because the thing is, like, I hmm. it was kind of like that thing that you were avoiding looking at, you know, where it's just like, okay, but um, I like you don't necessarily want to face it. So like immediately you did ask that question. And it was kind of like just like someone kind of grabbing your chin and like tilting it to face the thing. Um, <laughs> where it's yeah. just like, okay, you're looking at it now. Right. And you're just like, fine, I'm looking at it. I know what it is. <laughs> um, and it was, it, it was like, it, it, there wasn't really any hesitation in the answer because like it was something that I think part of me had already known was there. Um, which is why like it was a prickly question yes and it was a rude question yes but it was also a very necessary question um, and it was very helpful in like getting me to just kind of like be like okay no this is this is the track go do the thing um, so it it invoked a lot of movement um, if that makes sense mm -hmm. totally oh that is fun Wow. I love All right. that.
evoked a lot of movement and we've talked about this in podcasts before as well is asking these type of questions is holding the mirror up isn't it it is a form of empathy it's not like you're being rude for the sake of it you are asking this question to empower that growth and evoke awareness so i I just loved it yeah i mean i'm not trying i mean it's not like yeah, the point of it isn't to be rude. It, the point of it is I am willing to be rude for the sake of larger growth. If that's be entirely takes. clear as well for for the rude comment, that one is more like that kind of like okay, like it's it's the grudging awareness that this was necessary, and it was never it like it very clearly came across with the sense of like no, this is being asked because it's going to benefit me and because it's helpful. Like it's a good thing to know. There was no point where I was like ah this shouldn't have been asked or anything like that like it was just immediately like yes this was necessary yeah i think i i I will take on brood and like i I would i I want that i want that (laughs) don't take that one away (laughs) that's for you okay (laughs) (laughs) there was there was uh oh my goodness so i i I did this one demo and I, i i did this thing in a demo that i was quite proud of you know uh, and then I showed it to a class like week one or two and someone got offended and dropped out. And I was like, really? Like, really? Come on. Like, that's, come on. It, I don't know. Really, it it shook me a little bit. And I thought, oh my goodness, like, is that, did I go too far in that question? The client was loving me. She, she gave me, she was like, this is the best, you know, this is rad. But then someone else looked at it and said, no, like, it's, that's not, that's not my brand. And then I sat with it for a while and I thought, yeah. I mean, I, I think that there is a there is a kind of like uh, irreverence, some you know, to this process somewhat that uh, you can you can you know go towards you know, and, and Laura Whitworth, I mean, very much like she that was a brand of hers. So, you know, I'm I'm just going to go right to the heart of it. Boom! Like there we are. I said the thing that no one was willing to say to you for your growth. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. Uh, so I think there's a certain kind of, all right, we're going here. And at the same time, and this is an honoring, this is a sacred process. You're walking in places that no one goes to. Like, I mean, there's nowhere else in your life that you would go here without judgment. So, I mean, it's amazing to me that I process that I feel like walks on holy ground and it's, it's very sacred. It also allows for this kind of, I don't know, rude question for the sake of growth. Raj, I really do think we're only able to get through seven minutes of a recording at a time. So <laughs> we used to think, oh, we'll do, you know, one of these. And no, no, it takes three sittings to get through 30 minutes here. So. And I'm trying to zip it. I have so much to say. I'm like, I, I know you're know. holding back. I'm like, what are you? I know you're just holding back because you're just like, we're trying to get through the thing. We're not going to get through the thing. We have someone lined up for next week, too. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Sorry. Like, we're just going to have to spend three weeks on this one. You know. I mean, if it's any help, I think I have something next week. So we'll see. All <laughs> right. So no, we gotta, we, or we just say, you know what? This is part one. And it, you know, for those in the program, you can watch the whole demo and see how it goes. So yay, yay there. Uh, for the podcast, we're going to have a, a new one next week. But, you know, it's always there's always more learning. So. Uh, I think it's better than trying to rush uh, 12 minutes into a seven minute podcast anyway. So Roger, your thoughts on this? Like, might as well just go for it. Yeah. Well, there's just so much learning that's taking place here, isn't there? You know, and as I said, we get these questions even around um, prickly questions. What is the purpose of them? This is a great example here. It's wonderful actually hearing Shawnee's perspective as well, because she was receiving that question and how she received it. So I, I think, and you've been demonstrating in part one and even here in part two, how to use these different kinds of tools, right? So we've got the direct communication. I'm also hearing you champion, right? So the, the question that you asked around taking action, I don't see that as a doing question. I hear you bringing in challenge, challenge and even the championing tool because there is that empowerment around growth and, and that intuition that you can feel. Because Shawnee said very clearly herself, when you ask the question is what happens if you stay here, right? We saw her body language and she was like, in no uncertain terms, do I want to stay here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that kind of brought you into that place of even the the championing and the direct prickly question as well. Um, 
What would you add to that, Shawnee? I think I do really appreciate you kind of calling out like the it it really was like a very visceral and immediate response of like I don't want to stay here like I'm not I'm I refuse to stay here uh it's just like and I remember at that moment even just kind of being like I just want to know where I'm going <laughs> like and who I'm arriving as like you know you've reached your final destination I mean there's not really a final destination but you've reached your temporary final destination and <laughs> who is the person that's stepping out of the car <laughs> Um, like that's kind of like what I remember grappling with in there is just like this idea of like identity meeting with action items and like really combining into like a sense of like doing and being questions and and like uh, at the time a very confusing harmony but a very lovely uh, place to kind of linger in and question. I like that a temporary final destination like this is your temporary final destination enjoy enjoy that for a bit and then you'll have a new final destination coming up that's how it goes like we went through and covered like pathways and kind of like uh goal versus end state uh ones and i remember somebody asking me about or like i was i was coaching somebody else and they were uh talking about their goal as if it was a final like this is the end goal kind of thing and I'm just like no that's a pathway thing like you get there and you're still going <laughs> like, and that changed the entire perception of the conversation because like the thing is is that like I think if you do view end goals even when they're actually like journey goals it changes the course of the conversation uh quite a bit see what I'm talking about like you're already there like what you know what I mean she's already there what are we doing? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Shawnee, I'm curious because you, you know, we've been honored to have you last week and this week. And, you know, you're listening to yourself being coached. Yet, how is this also supporting you in your own coaching skills being part of this? Yeah. So I think one of the things that is beneficial to see this is one, I do get to see myself in. At, from a client space, I understand like more about when a client is giving me grace and kind of like allowing to see kind of into that perspective as well. But I think something that I really do appreciate actually from more of a coaching standpoint is that I there's been points where I've been watching John uh, and I've been like, oh yeah, I would do that there. Like, oh, I've done that before. Oh, this this connects to this and I see what he's doing there and you kind of like get the strategy in play, uh, which is really, really beneficial because I think it's especially when we're in the process of learning coaching um it's so easy to kind of to get jet lag like you you had mentioned earlier and just kind of be like oh but I'm still like a novice coach uh and you're just like not really acknowledging the like yeah you're learning but you're gonna stay learning like there's that is also another path like journey goal uh that just doesn't end and so in that regard I think if I had ever hit a point in my in my coaching journey where I'm just like, no, I am full, fully fledged coach. I have nothing more to learn. I am failing at my job. And so I think that changes the conversation and perspective in my head around where I am in my coaching as a person. Yeah, I think that's right on. Laura would talk a lot about the word aspire. It's one of the words she just like riffed on repeatedly. This idea of continuing to aspire to to become even better uh even as a master coach or even as what you fill in the blank uh she said it keeps aspire keeps you safe which i thought was an interesting idea like what do you mean keep you safe it's this idea i think what she was talking speaking to is this idea of it keeps you it keeps you moving it keeps you yeah. constantly you know it's yeah, interesting agree. safe being the word there i would almost say like aspire keeps you keeps you growing keeps you challenged more than like keeps you safe maybe like safe from complacency or something like that from fixed mindset from yeah. from having to defend like no 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 my coaching was good like you know i mean that this is like i i you know like the like no, no no like give me the feedback like you know was it good or not good? Because you don't really get a chance to ask. I mean, this is an unusual situation too, where you get a chance to talk to the client that you coached and watch the video 
and say, is it good or not good? What was good and not good about it? You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've, I've gone through a couple of times and I've tried to find my old recordings of myself, like the recordings I actually gave the first time to the ICF. I can't find them. But That would you know, be awesome. That'd be fun. Yeah, Sean, you well, were for a second. Yeah. So I, I was just listening to you both and, and maybe that's a question uh, for people that are listening, like what does Aspire give you, right? So John, you were talking about what Laura Whitworth said about Aspire might give you feeling safe or Sean is saying Aspire gives you the growth. I was thinking for me, Aspire uh, keeps me humble. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it allows me to stay in this space of that uh, MCC is not is a temporary final destination, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> there is more growth. <laughs> oh, I right. I think Aspire in that way is also like so it's it's humility, it's it's learning, it's growing, but it's also like. I think it's it's honestly a joy it's a privilege as well uh getting to go through and look at the world and say like no there's so much more that this world has to offer and so much more for me to learn and discover and like go and do um and like if you I, I <laughs> this is something that I have uh, that I have thought about many times in the past as well not necessarily in context of aspiring but more in context of curiosity is like curiosity is so closely interconnected with like uh with joy and actually like they found that it eases anxiety it eases depression like when you are in a happy place you have room to be curious and you have room to grow and that's something really really unique that I think is like a lot of uh provides a lot of perspective to how I approach the world is just that no there's still more to, to do mm -hmm. yeah curiosity is I mean even the idea of thinking not judging good or bad but thinking useful, not useful. Like, I mean, it's just, it's a little, it's a subtle shift, but that sometimes subtle shift can make a huge difference. Uh, and quickly to the word, aspire comes from a Latin word, sparare, which means to breathe. So it literally means like, what are you breathing towards? You know, what are you, what are you hoping for? Like, what, like literally there's a, there's a movement aspect to it, like, like breathing in and also moving towards it at the same time. Well, I know we're on time. That was, Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, John. And I know we talked about Aspire, yet I am inspired by both of you. And then we're going to close out, aren't we? And see, we'll see everyone next week. See you next week. Okay.